Hello, hello. I hope you guys are doing great. Listen, I was reading this article this morning from QP. And I found it so interesting. I decided that I'm just going to share it with you guys. Of course, I'm not going to read through all these pages or anything because we'll be here for a while. But the summary is there's a sports team or there's a league for baseball players that are of um, ages between 60 to 93, I think it is, or 94, 93. That is incredible. I mean, kudos to them. And they have implemented quality management into all the elements of their game to make sure that they execute the best way possible. So they take it into consideration customer focus, continuous improvement, teamwork, measurement, leadership, commitment, engagement, evidence-based decision-making, and process management in action. Okay, and then it translates to this. He says, love the industry, be honest about your capabilities, first impressions power what happens next, speak, speak the language of the industry and of the team, play to your strengths, your best may be the best outside the fray, predict the surprises, learn to forget, be victorious in defeat, measure what matters, have fun. Let's step up to the plate and take a swing at each other of those areas. Isn't that great? I love it. Then, it says here that players must be encouraging as well as tolerant. All industry all industries serve a purpose and there are people who are passionate about the purpose. We just need to find a way to bring all the passionate people together. The other thing it says, it, it says, it is too easy to live off the past, but what matters is today. We must earn today as well as earn our future. This requires brutal honesty about our own and organizational capabilities. A lot of times we don't want to do that, right? What we're we capable of. Sometimes we don't even know. He says, a bad first impression may demotivate the organization's team as well as its customer base. We must ensure when we make our appearance in a game or in a market we are ready he says here talent is critical but communication is even more so <sighs> what a lot of people are like no this person has a skill this person is an expert in this even if they don't communicate or what they communicate <laughs> i'm not gonna say anything else So it says here, in senior slow pitch softball, memories are short. This isn't just because we are older. To be a winner, we must think like winners. And that means learning from and letting go of the past and any errors that might have occurred. Organizations are much the same. We must plan for the success while also being encouraging and learning from less than the optimum outcomes. Organizations do this by learning how to speak to their employees in a manner that is crystal clear and relative to process, product and service requirements, as well as expressing disappointment in a respectful manner that also drives accountability. Dominique, disappointment, manner, in a way, accountability, 
Um, a lot of things that we failed to do. Accountability. No, no, no. We're here to talk about accountability. Because people are going to get upset if we talk about the stuff that they were supposed to do or committed to doing but never did. That's like, mm, we're hurting people's feelings by doing that. That's part of what we need to do. It says here, for this I have to read like the context of it because if not, it wouldn't make sense. It says, earlier we said that players can run off for other players. Well, that only works if they are not on the base when their turn at back comes. So when we line up, when the lineup is made, it's not about who hits the best, who is the fastest, or who knows the game best. It is more about how we produce runs using the full team lineup. To do this, we need people on base. And that means designing a lineup that has the good hitters and runners dispersed as opposed to cluster. Organization must do the same. Even thought we might want an all-star team on a project, we must remember the organization is working on more than one project at a time. As such, we must understand our talent well enough to be able to disperse the talents across multiple organization objectives. That requires understanding where in the organization our strengths reside. Yeah, give opportunity to everyone, right? Then he says here, okay. Injuries happen, lineups change. That's the title of this one. So it says here, as sure as there are three strikes and you're out at an old ball game, you also can expect pull muscles, strains, strain arms, sprain ankles, illnesses, and players whip out of town travel plans during a senior slow pitch sophomore season. You must plan for these predictable events. This explains why one player does not own a position exclusively. You see the strategy, if the player gets hurt, there's no one with the experience to play that position. For example, a backup pitcher is necessary. What do these injured players do after they get hurt? Well, coaching the bases is an option. Organizations deal with this type of situation when they face employee retention issues. Every organization should work to retain its talented employees, but it also should be realistic enough to know that having backups in place is imperative. Knowledge transfer. <laughs> Help others acquire the skills. Don't put all your eggs in the same basket. So it says here, tempers flare sometimes. There must be an allowance for each of us to be human and imperfect. We must have enough space to be ourselves. This may require management at times to be flexible. At times, not all the time. This is important. And I love this part. Like, there's a lot of things about this art particular article that I love, but um, this is so important because sometimes when we we lost, we won. So they basically are explaining that they went into this game against this other team, and this team was like they had never been defeated, okay, and they were like they thought that they weren't good enough to play against this team. So we, they expected to lose from the beginning, okay? When they started playing, they seven innings into the game, they were winning seven to one. Something happened, right, at the end where they ended up losing eight to seven. 
However, they learn from this experience. And I love it because he says, what we learned about ourselves in this game was that they, that we were a very good team. Specifically, our strength was in our defense. Even in defeat, we could find a positive messages to drive our continuous improvement. Not everything will be an organizational win, and there will be some disappointing, disappointing losses. Even in times when the organization comes up short, however, there still will be some encouraging outcomes, and those outco outcomes must be recognized and celebrated. Okay. This is what we do in like lessons learned and retrospectives, right? We talk about our losses, our mistakes, the stuff that are not quite going right because this is how we learn, okay? But we still celebrate what the stuff that we did learn, the stuff that we got accomplished, the stuff that we got completed. So it's a balance of the two. So going in thinking that you can't do it, you can't do it, and then finding yourself in a position where you almost won, well, that's just a lot. It says here, measurements must be motivating. So one of the things they talk about is like, how well did they perform individually and as a team? Did they enjoy themselves during the game or not? And that's important to them. And I think that should be important to every team. It says here, there's always something funny going on. That's the title of this section and we're about to be done. So it says here that you need to acknowledge a problem, but also be quietly encouraging of like, to the people to be their best, okay? What you need sometimes is just passive acknowledgement of a problem. Patience is skill set best practice when we think that the situation demands otherwise. In other, <laughs> sometimes we want immediate results. Sometimes there's a problem and we want it to be like, you know, we want the results. We want it now. We want it now. We want it to like get work through all of it at once. And sometimes just by recognizing there's a problem, bringing it up, okay? And then encouraging people to work on it, to be do their best, it results itself. But there's always a step to talk about it and recognize it. Not talking about it is not an option, okay? So this article was written by Russell Roberson and Paul D. Carfagna. And the article is from Quality Progress, and I love it. And I know I said and a couple of times. So, and I know I said so a couple of times too. It's just something to think about. There's always a way to do better. Bye.